Hello, everyone, and welcome to Literary Tales. I'm your host, Paul Krauss, and in this episode, we continue our study of the classics of American literature during the American Renaissance, and we move away from the critique of religious hope and optimism found in Hawthorne's Scarlet Letter and move to the critiques of the other currents of American innocence and optimism found in politics and economics, beginning with James Fenimore Cooper's The Last of the Mohicans. What makes Cooper's work special is how he deftly weaves the heroic Edemic figure at home in the wilderness, Hawkeye or Natty Bumpo, with tragic characters in the wild wilderness, Uncas, Chingacuch, and Magua all the while beset by the advancement of civilization and war. In fact, civilization and destruction go together in Cooper's creation. The setting of The Last of the Mohicans is the New York wilderness, but that serene garden of boundless possibilities is beset by the storm of war, the encroachment of gunfire and smoke of civilization and the pale-face English and French. Yet Cooper's leather-stocking tales, specifically The Last of the Mohicans, still play with the archetypes of the New Eve and the New Adam in the new Edenic world of America. Alice, sweet, faithful, and oftentimes hopeless, is the novel's Eve character. And for those who are familiar with The Last of the Mohicans in the film rather than the book, there is a substantive difference between the character development and progression of the storyline in Cooper's novel as opposed to what was portrayed for us in the film. Alice is wholesome, young, and meek. But who is the new Adam? It is not Hayward, but Hawkeye. And on top of the new Adam, we have instantiations of the noble savage. Magua first appears as someone different from the rest of the English soldiers he is accompanying to Fort William Henry. So too is Uncas, a noble savage hero who contrasts with the demonic deceit of Magua. Then, of course, there is Timonud, who is the character who best embodies wisdom once he is met and serves as the mediating grandfatherly sage between the various rivals. The last of the Mohicans juxtaposes the two great scenes of rupture in American life and collective memory. We witness majestic descriptions of the serenity of nature and also the horrifying desolation of nature and its suffocation under blood, smoke, and gunfire. We have the American garden. We also have the American garden being destroyed by civilization. The machine has entered the garden. The wilderness, the garden, this new land of promise, is sometimes, quote, buried in eternal sleep, not the least sound arising from the forest, unless it was the distant and scarcely audible rippling of watercourse. Birds, beasts, and man appeared to slumber alike, if indeed any of the latter were to be found in the wide tract of the wilderness, but the sounds of the rivulet, feeble and murmuring as they were, relieved the guides at once from no trifling embarrassment, and towards it they immediately held their sway. Such serenity is then destroyed when Cooper describes those scenes of fire, war, and storm having come to this serene wilderness. A frightful change had also occurred in the season. The sun had hid its warmth behind an impenetrable mass of vapor, and hundreds of human forms, which had blackened beneath the fierce heats of August, were stiffening in their deformity. Before the blast of premature November, the curling and spotless mists, which had been sailing above the hills towards the north, were now returning in an indomitable dusky sheet that was urged along by the fury of the tempest. In short, 
it was a scene of wilderness and desolation. But concern for the destruction of the serenity of the wilderness is not Cooper's primary concern. Instead, it is the political destruction of people and how neither the new Adam nor the noble savage can escape the vicissitudes of time and history. Hawkeye, as we know, is a white Englishman who has escaped those ancient prejudices and hatreds to find a home with his Mohican family. It is Adam returned to the garden from his exile. Yet in falling into this Edenic world, he has inadvertently entered the tragic world with a race of people moving towards their extirpation and extinction. Hawkeye is heroic. He is at home in the wilderness, but he is not at one with the wilderness as the wilderness ideal invites. Instead, he is constantly at war in the wilderness. He never has that prelapsarian serenity in his adventures. Hawkeye's heroism is never divorced from his salvific hand over the course of the novel. We meet Hawkeye when he, Chingakuch, and Unka save Hayward, Alice, Cora, and David from Magua and the treacherous Huron. Hawkeye's progression through the story is subsequently seen in his guidance of the Monroe daughters and Hayward to Fort William Henry, which is under siege by the French and their Huron allies, a true apocalypse in the midst of the wilderness. He again appears to save Alice and Hayward and David from the vengeful hand of Magua during the climax of the story in which Cora dies. Hawkeye's home is in the heroics of history and not the serenity of primitiveness. It is found in the action of time rather than the peace of pre-time. Additionally, we dive deeper and deeper into the hell of the New World experienced by Magua, Uncas, Chingakuch, and Tamanud. Cooper, Cooper does not blame, as has become commonplace in the ideological driven modern, uh, modernity, that modern university, all the plight of the Native Americans on European settlers. As the Native American characters reveal in their own dialogues and monologues, they too have had bitter rivalries and wars among themselves long before the Europeans ever arrived. The land of innocence was never really innocent. Now, however, the land of innocence in our mind is becoming a land of tragedy. And that, I would contend, is the masterful creation of Cooper in the last of the Mohicans. Cooper manages to balance hope, the relationship and love shared between Hayward and Alice, with tragedy, the story of Uncas, Magua, and Cora, in an Edenic environment that calls us home, but also erupts in war and bloodshed. The political optimism of the era of good feelings is challenged by Cooper's reminder that the new world was forged in blood and fire. The blood and fire of Native American rivalries and the European rivalries that pit native against native and white against white in a destructive battle for control over the North American continent. Not only has the prejudice of the old world come to taint this new world, but this new world was never free of old world prejudices to begin with. Huron, Delaware, and Mohican have all exuded those prejudices which make the wilderness a graveyard and continue to make the wilderness a graveyard now with the war between France and England. The last of the Mohicans is the great American tragedy, exposing the emptiness of civilizational and political optimism and progress. Yet Cooper is, to a certain extent, sympathetic to the Native American plight. As Chingakuch cries as he buries his son, Uncas, he exclaims, my race has gone from the shores of the Salt Lake and the thrills of the Delawares.
But who can say that the serpent of his tribe has forgotten his wisdom? I am alone. While Hawkeye comforts Chingakuch, there is an atmosphere of tragedy which the novel ends on. The world of hope and promise is, in fact, a world of brokenness and tragedy. Everyone has lost something or someone dear to them over the course of the novel. For Chingakuch, however, the loss is sharper than Colonel Monroe's tears for Cora. Chingakuch has lost his only son, and with him the final seed of his people. The cost of civilization is not just the ongoing desolation of the wilderness, but the destruction of entire peoples. As Tamanud prophetically says at the end of the novel, the pale faces are masters of the earth, and the time of the red men has not yet come again. My day has been too long. In the morning I saw the sons of Unimus happy and strong, and yet before the night has come have I lived to see the last warrior of the wise race of the Mohicans. The last of the Mohicans ends in a funeral, and that is important for us to recognize. The theme of innocence lost Death and tragedy permeate the work. It is somber and moving. It has moments of hope and optimism for new birth and life. But at its core, The Last of the Mohicans is a tragedy. And tragedy is the reality we enter when innocence is lost. Because Cooper focuses on people and sets the story in the backdrop of war, The Last of the Mohicans challenges the political optimism of the party of hopeful innocence by reminding us of the real human cost of progress and the persistent reality of what Christians have long called sin. The progress of civilization does not come with innocence. It comes with loss and tragedy.